Hi everyone, thank you for joining me for Picket Fence Studios May Release. As usual, there are many fabulous products. I'm going to be focusing on one of my favorites, Play Is Good. This stamp set with coordinating dies features a gorgeous treehouse and all kinds of cute little figures and fabulous sentiments. I have two completely different takes on this set. For the first card, the tutorial will primarily target the inlaid rainbow and a little trick to make that easier. The second card will focus on two interesting techniques. One, of course, is the interactive element, the pop and twist. We will also have a look at how to create a color wash with alcohol inks. So let's get started with the card that features the inlaid rainbow. I'm using slimline rainbow and curvy rainbow dies in conjunction with play is good. I started off with a panel of light blue cardstock measuring three and three eighths by eight and three eighths inches and die cut it with the slimline rainbow die. I also use the die to cut seven colors of cardstock to produce my rainbow. I have this thing about wasting cardstock, and so I took narrow strips of each color, placed them over the band of the rainbow that I wanted in that color, and then die cut it. When this rainbow is die cut, it leaves narrow bands of the background color between the rays of light. After running the blue cardstock through the die cutter, all of those die cuts were kept intact by placing several strips of scotch tape on the back. One die cut was removed at a time and replaced with its colored counterpart. Before going on to the next color, I make sure that that thin strip of cardstock is pressed right up against the one that I just inlaid. The scotch tape on the back of the panel holds everything in place and ensures that as the pieces are being inlaid that they're going to fit perfectly together with no overlapping of cardstock or any gaps in between. Three clouds were die cut from white cardstock using the curvy rainbow die. A different sentiment was stamped on each of the clouds using Picket Fence Studios Intense Black Ink. I also stamped four of the cute little figures included with the Play Is Good stamp set on white cardstock and Copic colored them. The images are small, so they were colored in no time at all, and then they were die cut with the coordinating dies. Before I began assembling the card, I did reinforce the back of the inlaid panel with additional scotch tape just to make sure that nothing was going to slip out of position. After the clouds were adhered, the two staggered ones that were overhanging the panel were trimmed down flush to the panel's edge. The panel was then adhered to a black matted card base that measured 8.5 inches by 3.5 inches. To finish up this fun and summery card, the die cut images were arranged on the cloud tops. For the second card, I stamped the treehouse on white cardstock using Picket Fence Studios Intense Black Ink, which is Copic friendly. I'm going to start by coloring in the trunk. I'm working with E13, 15, 18, and 31. Typically, when I Copic color, I go darkest to lightest, but I'm a little bit all over the place as I work on different sections of the tree. And for the trunk, I do go darkest to lightest, but I'm starting off just a little bit differently. I'm using my light marker to map out where my shadows are. Starting with my lightest marker lets me have some flexibility as I determine exactly where those shadows are going to be. I then switch over to my darkest marker, which is the E18. Once all the shadows are in place, I use each of those areas as a point to work from my darkest to my lightest tone. That creates variation in the coloration of the tree, giving it some texture and dimension. The ink is applied in a flicking motion. 
concentration of the ink when you flick your pen off of your paper will be less and when the next color is introduced that will help create a smooth blend. My lightest color is the E31 and when I fill in all of the areas that are left white I just do a scrubbing motion and then I run through all of my markers for a second coat extending one color into the next to really create a lot of depth and dimension. The foliage on the trees are colored with G99, YG63, G82 and YG03. Foliage is in distinct sections and I work on one at a time and this makes it very easy to color. I start off with my lightest tone YG03 and color in the complete area and switch over to the G99 which is my darkest tone and put in my shadow areas. And then like the tree trunk I continue working darkest to lightest putting on two coats of color until I have a nice smooth blend. Although working on the tree house section by section is an efficient use of time, the coloring does take a fair amount of time and effort to complete. For both the siding and the roof of the playhouse, I'm working with a group of warm grays, darkest to lightest, W7, 6, 4, 3, and 0. To add a pop of color, the eaves and the trim around the windows and door are completed with R43 and 46. The glass is colored with BG000 and 01. And then the railing system is colored just simply with YG03. Slimline short grass dye was used to cut white cardstock. The same tones of green that were used in the tree foliage were used to color the grass. The darkest tone was used at the base of the grass and then went through all of my colors of green, just flicking it up through the grass until it was all completely colored in. I ended up doing a second die cut so that I could create three layers of grass at the base of the tree. Now I'm ready to create my panels and there's quite a few for this card. So of course there's the one for the front of the card, but I also have two full panels on the inside of the card in addition to the four small ones that will be on the pop and twist mechanism. After the treehouse was completed, I wanted to continue to maintain that rich and bold color in the background. First, I was considering creating my backgrounds with my Copic markers, but I had so many to do, I was thinking of ways that I could do it more time efficiently. So I decided that I would create a watercolor look, but it would be bolder because I'm going to be using alcohol inks. I'm working from a palette created for alcohol inks by Tim Holtz. When you work with alcohol inks in these palettes, if you have anything left over, you can just let them dry and then reconstitute them with either blending fluid or isopropyl alcohol. So that is exactly what I'm doing. I'm using up some of the inks that I had left over in the palette, although later on I do have to add in some more. I'm working on Bristol Smooth cardstock. It can withstand some liquid without peeling or warping. The alcohol ink is applied to the cardstock. It almost dries immediately, almost like you were working with your alcohol markers. Either blending fluid or isopropyl alcohol, also known as rubbing alcohol, can be used to keep the alcohol inks more fluid. On my first panel, I was working with the blending fluid and applying it just directly to the alcohol ink and then putting it on the panel. But I found that I was using quite a bit and it is expensive, so I did switch over to the isopropyl alcohol for the rest of them. I place my isopropyl alcohol in a smaller bottle with a very fine nozzle so that I can control the amount of liquid that is coming out. 
I found that by applying it directly to the panel, it gave me lots of time to move the alcohol ink around, but that bold color was still being maintained. I love children's literature, and I am really drawn to those books that have been illustrated by artists in bold, dark colors. The colors were inspired by a beautifully illustrated book called Happy, a Children's Book of Mindfulness, which, by the way, is not only beautifully illustrated, but also beautifully written. Considering the number of backgrounds that I had to create for this card, they came together very quickly, and I know that if I had done them with Copic markers, it would have taken double the time. And it was fun and easy to do. And although my panels look very wet, which in fact they are, because it's isopropyl alcohol, it actually dries very quickly. When I began working on the four small panels for the pop and twist mechanism, I just lined them all up and painted them as if they were one panel. So I'm warming myself up to work on the pop and twist mechanism by completing the front of the card first. Both the tree and Picket Fence Studios white foam panel were die cut with the coordinating tree die. After the tree was attached to the card front, the grass die cuts were cut into three pieces. I attached the one in the foreground first by mounting it on foam. I then used liquid adhesive on the other two die cuts and slipped them in behind the one that was attached with foam. Card front was then adhered to a black cardstock panel that measured 4 and 1 8 by 5 and 3 8 inches. There is a white embossed sentiment on each of the four small panels that are going to be on the pop and twist mechanism. For stamping with Versamark ink, I use my anti-static powder tool. A different sentiment is stamped on each of the four panels. After I've coated it with embossing powder, heat is applied to both the front and the back of the panel to minimize warping. The small figures are stamped in black ink. The images are Copic colored. Because they're small, this is a quick and easy job. I don't worry about coloring over the background color. I just think it adds to the artsy feel. The two panels that will go on the inside of the card and the four small panels for the pop and twist mechanism are going to be matted on black cardstock. I had some filming issues while putting together the pop and twist mechanism, so I had to redo that part. While making the card, all of these matted panels were adhered to the inside of the card base and to the panel for the pop and twist. For the next section, when I'm putting this interactive element together, you're going to see me working on white plain cardstock. And now I'm ready to do the pop and twist. Starting off with a panel of white cardstock that measures three and three quarter inches by 11 inches. And I'm scoring at two and three quarters, five and a half, and eight and a quarter inches. This panel will be attached to the pop and twist mechanism revealing four smaller panels. The panel is folded and burnished along the score lines into Z folds to create an accordion. To create the mechanism that will pop and twist the panel we just worked on, we start off with a piece of cardstock that is eight inches by three inches. A quadrant will be created by scoring on the long side at four inches and on the short side at one and a half inches. An X is going to be created in the middle of this panel. I'm going to use my scoreboard to do the measurements and on the long side, I'm going to make a mark at two and a half inches and five and a half inches. Flip it around and again, make a mark at two and a half and five and a half. To create the two diagonal score lines, I'm going to line up my two and a half inch mark on one side with my five and a half inch mark on the other side. So with all these score lines, it can be a little bit tricky. Using a ruler, I lined it up along one of the score lines. 
I then made sure that the mark on both the top and the bottom of the panel that I'm wanting to connect follows along that same score line. When the scoring was completed, I did the same thing for the other two marks forming an X in the center of the panel. All of the score lines are given a quick fold before they are burnished. When burnishing both the vertical and the horizontal score lines, I push it up against my scoreboard's edge so that I get it nice and square. After the initial burnishing, I go back and re-burnish everything. Taking a little bit of extra time will ensure that the mechanism operates smoothly. Fold the mechanism, the two long ends are pushed inwards and then the sides are folded on top of one another, causing the arrows to pop upwards. I hold those two pieces together so that they meet right up against one another and then give those triangles another good burnish. When creating interactive cards, you need a really strong adhesive. I'm working with Su Quang double-sided tape. Two strips of the adhesive are applied to the triangle on both sides of the mechanism. Once I've laid the tape down, I give it a really good rub to make sure that there's good contact with the cardstock. The panel is opened up and on the side which has no adhesive, two strips will be placed on the top right hand corner and the bottom left hand corner. mechanism is now ready to be attached to the pop-up panel. The panel needs to be laid out correctly and I've heard of other crafters refer to fold lines as valleys and mountains which is a good way of describing it. So for this panel the valley needs to be in the center of the panel with the two mountains on either side of it. The mechanism is opened up with the tape on the triangles facing upwards. The score line in the middle of the mechanism needs to line up with the score line in the center of the panel. The adhesive backing is removed from the back of the panel, the top right hand corner and the bottom left hand corner. I make sure that my center score lines are lined up and that the spacing between the panels top and bottom is more or less the same before pressing down my panel on either hand to adhere it. To fold the panel up, I take it from either end and push it towards the middle. And then I help those triangular pieces lay flat. So just a reminder that I had adhered the little card fronts to each of the quadrants before this step was completed. Now the completed pop and twist mechanism is ready to go into the card base. If you are going to have inside panels like I do, of course those will have to go in first. Before I go any further, I'm just going to check to make sure that the pop and twist panel is not going to extend beyond the card base. This one is fine, but if it had been a problem, I would have trimmed off just a little bit of the top of the triangle. The backing is removed just on one side of the mechanism. The point on the triangle is lined up to the center of the card base, meeting that score line in the middle. The backing is removed from the exposed adhesive strips and the card base is closed up. And there you have it, a fun interactive element. The color wash background usually associated with watercolors rather than alcohol ink and the interactive element was a fun way to showcase this really cute stamp set, Play is Good. Whether you like a card that has a more artsy feel or one that is clean and simple, Play is Good is flexible enough to fit both styles of cards. Be sure to check out Picket Fence Studio on YouTube or Instagram to enter a great giveaway. 
and you must see the rest of the May release. It is absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much for joining me, and as always, I appreciate your visit.